Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the world's biggest stars and some of my favourite people and guys who are remarkable. One man has been in the British Army as a musician for over 29 years. He's sung around the world, the USA, Canada, Germany, and he was the man behind The Soldiers. They shot to fame with those two massive albums, The Soldiers, and of course, Coming Home. We spoke before. Well, now it's time for Christmas, which means let's bring out a Christmas single and raise even more money for charity. Joining us on the phone is Gary Chilton. How are you, Gary? Very well, thanks, Alex. Hey, Very listen, well. good to talk to you. Congratulations on this new single. It really is lovely, and it really embodies everything that Christmas is about. And uh, let's hope it's going to be number one for Christmas. How do you feel about that? Well, let's hope so. I mean, Christmas is a great time, and it's, it's a great time to think about others and, and maybe stop and have a pause and, and think about others that maybe are less fortunate than, than ourselves. And, and I suppose you can sort of tie that in with, with life within the armed forces. Um, some, some families this year will be missing loved ones that are currently away uh, on ops. Uh, and, and even more importantly, uh, families will be missing loved ones that they've, they've actually lost uh, in action. So uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a lovely song uh, that, that carries a, a lovely sort of sentiment with it. Again, it's a provocative and evocative title. I wonder where he is now is the song. And of course, all the money goes to help for heroes. One of the things I never understood when I worked for BFBS, I never went to a war zone, but I I worked in Germany for the troops. It is their sense of undying faith that they just go where they're told and they do it with great heart. That's really the backbone of the army, isn't it? They defend their queen no matter what. They don't get involved in the politics of it. No, you're absolutely right. You know, um, the guys turn up for work in the morning uh, and if they're told that they've got to get be somewhere, that's where they've got to be. You know, about be- being in the Army, Navy, Air Force, is all about following orders. Uh, and um, that's, that's, that's the deal uh, when you go into the careers office uh, and sign on the dotted line. Um, uh, but it works really, really well. <laughs> it's, um, mm. you know, it's, it's part and parcel of Armed Forces life. And again, I think music is such a big part and entertainment because it's the one bit of light relief that you are guaranteed at the end of the day, isn't it? It is, you know, and, and being a member of the Corps of Army Music, you know, we, we, we've, we've been in this situation now for, for the last seven, eight years where we have musicians that are going across to places like Afghanistan and, and all over the world to, to entertain the troops. Uh, we call it the sort of moral component of fighting power. And, and it's all about putting smiles on faces, uh, Alex. And, you know, a, a happy soldier will, will always be a good soldier, you know. What's interesting as well about the troops is their positivity and, of course, that sense of humour. We talked about this last time we spoke that, you know, there is a very dark side to army people and you have to have that because if not, you just spend all day crying and be miserable. Uh, yeah, that's right. You know, when, when the first album Coming Home came out, you know, I was coming back to work and everyone saying, all right, you, you, you haven't got a microphone in your hand anymore, get the blooming kettle on, you know, <laughs> have a brew, you know. So it's, uh, it's um, yeah, it's that very sort of dry, dark sense of humour which, which which you've been talking about there. And it's uh, I, I think it's, it's critical to, to morale within within the ranks as well because everyone gets it, um, regard, mm. regardless of what rank you are or, or where, you, where you sit in, in the rank structure. I don't know how you feel, but there seems to be more and more affection for the boys abroad than there has ever been. Um, I mean, this year, of course, has been so spectacular with the poppies in London the support for you guys is phenomenal isn't it it is uh, and, and as you rightfully say that, you know, the poppies it, it was a wonderful wonderful show of respect for what is now the, the 100th anniversary of World War One. Um, but uh, you know some of your listeners may cast their minds back to the summer when, when we had the Invictus Games uh, and the, 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 the outpouring of support for those very brave men and women that had gone through unspeakable injuries uh, and, and were now competing uh, within, within sort of sporting events in, within their own right, you know, and to see them running 100 metres, you know, throwing the shot put and, and, and hurling the javelin down, down, you know, it's it's remarkable that the, these guys have got this sort of never say die attitude, uh, and they, you know, they, they even laugh and joke about their own injuries themselves, which is just testimony to the to the characters, you know. And again, it is that humility that fascinates me. There's never a feel sorry for yourself attitude, is there? It's always about others and the bigger picture, which is, again, so selfless. And that must be part of the training. There's something about the British Army that has that spirit. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I was privileged a couple of weeks ago to the uh, to go to the premiere of Kajaki, uh, the film about three power, uh, mm. um, the, 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 where five members of the regiment were injured, uh, and, and even when the you know, the 
trailer of the film is, is been made to be as lifelike as possible. Um, even there, when they're laying on the ground injured, they're still cracking jokes to each other. Uh, and to hear the audience laughing um, during a film, um, it, again, it's that dark humour that, that, that comes across um, within the armed forces. Tremendous. What is your life like? Because there you were, just a musician for the army, minding your own business, and then suddenly you're knocking Whitney off the charts and Michael Jackson you're beating to number one. Um, there's been an extraordinary success that's led you to incredible places to meet some remarkable stars and royalty. I mean, it, it, you're sort of living the dream, aren't you, really? Well, yeah, and it, it was... It was it did, you're right in saying it came from nowhere. Um, I just got back from the skiing trip and, and uh, adventure training, and uh, there was a letter there saying, "Look, he's still in the army uh, with an aspiration to sing." You know, and uh, I thought I thought it was a joke to start with, Alex. You know, and I, 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 I responded to the letter, and uh, and then nine months later, we were riding high at number four uh, in the album charts. It was uh, like you say, it was it was it was one hell of a roller coaster ride that year, 2009. Um, certainly, a year that I want incredible. And give me some of the highlights of the people you met and the places that you performed at, because you did some extraordinary events that people spend entire careers dreaming of performing and never arrive at. I mean, the Royal Albert Hall, for one, has got to be an incredible place to perform. Well, in 2009, we, we, we were never out of the Royal Albert Hall. We did um, Songs of Praise. <laughs> You're bragging now, Gary. You're bragging. Oh, uh, no. I mean, it was just, it, 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 there was a joke there saying the soldiers got their own changing room there. You know, um, but we did, the, we did the Festival of Remembrance. Um, we then did two nights support for Michael Bolton, which was incredible. Um, and then uh, the just before Christmas that year as well, we did the Royal Variety performance, and uh, Her Majesty the Queen um, came along and said hello in the lineup afterwards, which was fantastic. You know, it, it's just been just one of those, as you say, uh, an incredible journey. Um, but the, the music speaks for itself. It, it, I think it's what we represent. I, I think uh, as a group, and then days, uh, which was the really important thing. You know. Um, which is probably spurring me on now to do to do this single for the for Healthy Heroes. Mm. How are the other boys doing? What, what's happened to the other two? Well, to be honest, uh, um, because we're so busy, we, 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 we very rarely speak to each other at the moment. Uh, I, I think Ryan down is a civilian now down working in, in the south of Wales, and, and, and Richie is uh, in the band of Her Majesty's Benedict Arts up in London. So um, very, very busy. Um, but but um, when, when the soldiers sort of came to an end, um, it was something that I wasn't prepared to do because you know I wanted to be singing for the rest of the, for the rest of my life. You know, it's yeah. something that's in my blood, and um, the opportunity came along to do this, and it, it was just too good to turn down. Tell me about this single and where you found it and how it came to you. I wonder where he is now. Is this new single? It's available for Help for Heroes. You can donate online and get it online. Um, it's also available uh, at HMV and other independent record stores as well in hard copy. Tell us about it. Well, um, I was approached about 12 months ago by uh, a songwriting trio, Warwick, Wickenden and Young, um, who got in contact with me and saying, look, Gary, we're, um, we've listened to your stuff. Um, we, we, we really like your voice. It suit what we're writing really, really well. Uh, and I said, okay, no worries. So I went around Adrian, who's one of the songwriters, I went around his house one night and he, he played me a couple of things um, on his guitar and it, he played me this one song and I went, oh, that's beautiful. Uh, and um, he, he sung the words and uh, and we, we adapted the words slightly and I said, look, this would be a fantastic you know, charity single uh, for something like Help for Heroes. Uh, so it, it, it evolved from that, that night, that conversation uh, where we you have know, two friends you know, that have come together uh, and started sort of almost sort of composing the song between themselves and, and, and the singer, you know, and it's it's a, it's a lovely song, and that's why I think we feel so personally connected to the song because it's been a journey in itself, uh, Alex. Actually, from the, from, the, from when we actually sort of got in contact with each other, uh, right through to now, and, and there's no prouder group of people at the moment than the songwriting team, myself, the other publisher, because you know we've all been on this wonderful journey through with this song uh, and. To see it now um, down for pre-order and, and getting tipped um, in fourth place for Christmas number one is, you know, it's a, it's a huge, huge satisfying moment for us. Of course, it's most uh, famously going to be available in Tesco. That's probably where most people will find it the easiest. It's also available on Amazon as well. I always ask the balladeers this. How do you keep the emotion under wraps when you sing it live? Because it could get out of hand and it could become a dreadful, teary performance, couldn't it? You've got to put emotion in, but not too much. Yeah, I, I, I think over the last five years, I've had such a good grounding with, with them sort of performances. The, uh, the first year that we did uh, the Festival of Remembrance, um, I was I, I 
was singing in front of 35 war widows, some of which had only just lost their loved ones. And, um, you know, we, we, we said before the performance, look, just don't look straight ahead, look up, pick a light to sing to, uh, and, and whatever you do, don't look at the VT screens. The VT screens as well were showing um, sort of film footage of um, homecomings and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, it was, it was such an emotionally charged atmosphere that night. But I, I think it's something that you just have to sort of custom your body to do, you know, and, and, and block out everything else and just sing the song, but also sing it with the emotion that, that it deserves. Um, it's, it's, it's difficult, yeah, difficult. And again, I think that really sums up the army, doesn't it? It's one of complete emotions, the highs, the lows, the incredible adrenaline. And then, of course, the reality of war is death. And uh, it's it's a tough life. I had the greatest admiration for people in the army. I don't know how the wives cope. I don't know how the soldiers cope. It's not an easy life. And there's certainly no glamour in it, is there? No, it's, it's, it's a way of life. And, and you know, uh, it, when guys get married, I think their wives are, uh, are under no illusions what, what, what they're taking on. You know, yeah. and, and mums and dads, when they see their loved ones, their sons, their daughters join the army, they're under no illusions as well. Um, I, I can remember as clear as day when I was a young 16-year-old lad getting on a getting on a train in Hampshire. My mum stood there crying her eyes out because her 16-year-old son was going off to do two years training. Uh, and then consequently joining the regulars, uh, uh, you know, and it's a memory that will always sort of stick in my mind, you know, yeah. um, your children, your wife, your husband, your mum's dad, the, the most pre precious possessions that you, you have, and, um, you know, it's a difficult thing to let go sometimes. Well, God bless you all, because if it was for people like me, we'd never fight any wars, because I'm not brave enough. Um, this new single is out and out. You can pre-order it. I wonder where he is now. Is the new single. It's out in support of Help for Heroes. You can get it from December 1st on CD in Tesco's HMV and also independent record stores and online now at Amazon. Really great to talk to you. Final question then, all this nonsense about uh, number ones, people bidding on you. It could be the Christmas number one. Does this terrify you or is it exciting? Um, it doesn't terrify me, but it, like you say, it is exciting. And what better testimony to uh, all the brave men and women that have fought for this country over the last hundred years uh, would it be than to have this song at number one at Christmas? Um, I can't think of anything more suitable. And, um, you know, it's let, let's see, let's see. But um, I think it stands a damn good chance, Alex. Well, I've got to be honest with you. I, I think people are sick of the PR machine of X Factor. I think there's an anti X Factor vote this year. And I think that will put you in favour because in the past they've sort of stormed through just because Simon Cowell says so. This year, I think we've got more on our minds and at this time of terror that we seem to be reminded of at six o'clock every night, I think we are looking for something slightly more spiritual and meaningful and this single is certainly that. I Wonder Where He Is Now is the new single by Gary Chilton. It's out for Help for Heroes. Thank you so much for your time, Gary. Alex, thanks for having me on the show.